Welcome to K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That's Derek Young. The Wildcats put up 41 points in a blowout win for the second straight week at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. This time they get the shutout to go with it. 41 nothing. the final score. I think you were telling us this before we came down. Nine straight quarters without a touchdown allowed by the K-State defense? Yep, nine straight quarters with three points total in those quarters. So just one field goal. I think uh, they, uh, they missed the field goal today. I don't, Houston never even got in the red zone. Yeah, Houston came close, and then when they got down there, they missed the field goal. They were at like the 28-yard line after the Avery Johnson fumble. So, I mean, there you go. Quarterbacks, we got to talk about it because it has been the most important thing on people's minds for a while now. Will Howard played a majority of the game, which, you know, I said going into the week, I thought that's what you kind of wanted. You wanted to be able to establish who the quarterback was heading into the game at Texas. And not only do I think you did that, Will Howard played pretty well today. Yeah, I mean, Chris Kleiman said it might have been one of his better gains of his career. I thought what he did best was taking what the defense gave him instead of forcing the ball into some windows that he had no business doing. So one of his better performances, I don't think it's his best performance because you got to think about Oklahoma State last year, uh, Baylor last year as well. I think this is up there. I, I don't know how close it is. Pretty tight. But he did, he was really good today in terms of just taking what the defense gave him. Completed his first 12 passes for 140 yards two touchdowns. It was interesting that they took him out after that. I know they just stick to the plan. I'm not going to criticize that, but you know, sometimes it, you know, when a guy's cooking, I, I almost want to let him cook. Uh, then you had the Avery Johnson who came in and had the turnover, but at least he got some time in the fourth quarter as well. Threw a touchdown to Seth Porter, his first career touchdown. So that was cool to see. I, I think you got kind of what you wanted. I know there's a lot of people that just wanted Avery Johnson to be the one to pull away, but having a quarterback in general pull away a little bit, I think was ideal heading into the Texas game because you know your, your team knows, you know, who's at the front of the room, and so to speak, and all that. But, you know, this wasn't too dissimilar to Texas Tech. Um, just kind of reverse. That game was like, okay, this should be Avery Johnson's game. Mm-hmm. And they gave it to him. And this one, it's like, okay, this should be Will Howard's game. And they gave it to him. So these are – this is a thing that's kind of tough to balance sometimes, a two-quarterback system. But they're pushing a lot of the right buttons. I, I you know, You know, you can probably nitpick here and there. But I like that even though they're doing it, two quarterback system and both guys do deserve to play that they are finding the right moments to kind of turn to one rather than the other yeah and today obviously it was the Will Howard game Avery Johnson had the fumble we didn't see him again until later into the second half but he came in led K-State down the field eventually had the touchdown Seth Porter like you mentioned and there was enough good still there where you felt like okay everything's back on track but today you kind of saw what could happen when you rely more on Avery Johnson at points and also Houston was they were ready for some of that I think they, they came in prepared for a whole lot of one thing and got a lot different from K-State because I mean, we talked about it all week we thought the weather was going to impact how much passing was done obviously the weather held off until basically right at this moment as we're getting uh, ready to, to do this and we got thunder and raindrops coming yeah, we got thunder we got lightning it's about to pour on us so this yeah. might be a shorter video than usual but uh, at least uh, it all held off until right now where you, you get what multiple delays in Lawrence I think at this point for the KU game in against Oklahoma where we're getting the adjacent bean show that we thought we would get that that poor guy just doesn't know how to perform in the fourth yeah. quarter the late moments but steering back to Kansas State you know Avery Johnson had some learning moments today had some growing pains today but he also redeemed himself and still had a, had a good moment to, to finish the game off so it probably still unfolded the way you'd like but you know there's a reason sometimes you don't go head first with, with a true freshman and, and we've seen flashes of that from Avery Johnson and I thought today we actually saw flashes of that from Jace Brown. He didn't have some yep. great moments, but you don't go away from them completely, and Kansas State won't. They're going to count on Jace Brown this year. They're, they're going to count on Avery Johnson again this year. Those two guys will play a pivotal role. And probably next week against Texas because that becomes a massive matchup now. The Cats are 6-2. and two. They are 4-1 and one in Big 12 play, and, I mean, you can look back and really kick yourself and say, what if with the Oklahoma State game? Because the season feels drastically different if K-State wins that game and you're 7-1 and one and you're unbeaten in conference play and you're probably still ranked pretty highly. But K-State has it all in front of them. If they take care of business in Austin, they put themselves in the conversation with Oklahoma as front runners to be back in Arlington. And, I mean, we'll, we'll get to the defense in just a second to finish things off, but – With the quarterback thing, Will Howard, Avery Johnson, I mean, it'll be Will Howard next week, no doubt, and that's probably best-case scenario for K-State because I think his ceiling is higher for this K-State team this year than Avery Johnson's. But how much do we anticipate Avery Johnson being involved in the game plan against Texas? You know, you'll get some of it, and you'll – 
He's an explosive playmaker, and that's never going to change in a given week. You're going to need that because the explosives are probably more important against a team like Texas where it's probably going to be a little bit tougher to string along long drives like you did today. Houston's defense isn't exactly the Texas Longhorns. You know, Texas, you know, for all the publicity you get with Xavier Worthy, Quinn Ewers, who's probably not going to play, and maybe Arch Manning does, I mean, their best thing is their defense. I mean, they – and they stop the run. Uh, that that scares me a little because Kansas State everything kind of feel, feel uh, feeds off of that run game. So, what does that look like? But no, Aver- I you know I'd, I'd imagine you still go into that Texas Texas game in Austin. I don't think your approach should change. I think you need to keep the winning recipe. That's a driver two to begin for Will Howard. That's a driver two to begin for Avery Johnson. And from beyond that point, you see how both are going. You see how the offense is going. You see how the game's going what you need, what the team needs, and make your decision there. I wouldn't change much. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd go into it, and I would roll with, with Will Howard and say, treat it like you did basically the game in Columbia where he is the starter, but there are going to be plays that involve Avery Johnson and make it a little bit more versatile. But, I mean, the way Will Howard has played the last two weeks, there, there's no reason – right now to assume that, hey, we need to get Avery into the mix heavily, just have him ready for when you think it will work. But also, be ready to do what it takes to win. Be ready to call that audible if you're Chris Kleiman and Conk Klein and do it early in the game if you don't think Will Howard has it because K-State, the definition of their season will be how they play against Texas. They win that game, they should make it to Arlington again, and if they don't, then the season looks quite a bit different based off of what's left for you. I mean, you could still win nine regular season games, try and make it 10 with the Bull, but you miss out on that big piece at the end of the Big 12 title. So we'll see how it looks offensively next week. Yeah, I mean, the floor is still pretty high for this Kansas State team just based off what they've done the past few weeks since that lost Oklahoma State. But your ceiling is dictated by what you can do against Texas next week. And I know you wanted to talk some defense. Let's talk some yeah, defense. Talk some uh, three points in nine quarters, zero touchdowns. Eh. You can't ask for much more. Not Probably not forcing a ton of turnovers. Yeah. I think he forced two today, uh, thanks to Will Lee, both times, really. Yeah. It's, it's about to pour on us right yeah. now. But, uh, look, Texas is also – Net, they're not easily defendable. It's not what I'm about to say. They got studs all over the place, and they're going to score no matter what, probably regardless of who plays because they're that talented. But they do kneecap their offensive explosive playmakers a little bit yeah. when they don't have Quinn Ewers to be the one distributing the ball. That makes Jatavian Sanders a little less effective. That makes Xavier Worthy a little less effective. That makes Adonai Mitchell a little less effective. So the, you're not going to face probably Texas offense at their best, but it's still a good unit. And real quick, because we'll get out of here. We're not soft, but the equipment is soft, so we can't be out here forever in the rain. But you hold Donovan Smith under 100 passing yards today, and, I mean, he's been a great passer. They have some weapons there. They've moved the ball against a lot of teams in the league. K-State didn't allow them to do that. It was a great showing by the defense, and they'll look to carry the momentum to Austin next week. It is a very stinky rain. There is no doubt about that. D.Y. is right on that. Uh, Just like I was right on D.J. Giddens' two touchdowns today. So thank you for paying attention to best bets and winning some money this week. I was not right on Houston. Yeah, D.Y. thought Houston was scoring at least 21 points. They did not. It was 41-0 Cats. That'll do it for D.Y. and I here on K-State Online. Stay locked in the rest of the week for great coverage in the lead-up to K-State and Texas and also recap of Patrick Ngongba, whose decision is now a week away after his visit in Manhattan today.